Joining us now is David Bonson, founder of the Bonson Group. David, good to see you. So we're going to dig into her policy in a second. But first, I want to get your impression of Kamala Harris as a leader. Did you see a president last night? I I didn't. And I suppose as a lifetime conservative, I may be a bit biased, but I did expect better. I think her performance at the convention and recent rallies has shown a little bit more spark. And there was something last night that was underwhelming if you're only talking about the leadership category. Um, Unfortunately, as we move into other categories, my critique gets worse. (laughs) David, I I don't know if you'll agree with me, but I'm curious to know, I thought the messaging coming out of Kamala Harris last night was quite confusing, especially when it came down to trying to get a handle on her policies. You know, she insisted that her policies in many respects have changed. You know, she used to be for tax and spend, the Green New Deal, decriminalizing illegal immigration, but she says that she's moving away from the these things. And yet she says her values have not changed. How can she change her policies, but still insist her values are the same? Well, in, in her case, she can't. I mean, in theory, it's certainly possible that someone could rethink a particular policy around a value uh, holding to a certain principle and rethink uh, a specific. That's not what's happening here. Um, we all know what it is. And I think a lot of people in the American public know what it is. It's rank politics. It's not new. This is just at another level. It's the same thing of platitudes that are passing off as policies and a flip-flop that is just being forgiven. It's being totally ignored. Um, I'm always for politicians flip-flopping when they're flipping from a bad position to a good one. (laughs) The problem is that's not what's happening. We're getting Mm. no meat on the bone, no specifics. And honestly, I think it's insulting to the intelligence of the American people. No meat on the bones when it comes to economics as well. She is not mentioning Bidenomics, but saying she is proud of the last four years. Take a listen. 33 in this. Well, first of all, we had to recover as an economy, and we have done that. I'm very proud of the work that we have done that has brought inflation down to less than 3 percent. The work that we have done to cap the cost of insulin at $35 a month for seniors, that we created over 800,000 new manufacturing jobs, bringing business back to America. What we have done to improve the supply chain so we're not relying on foreign governments to supply American families with their basic needs, I'll say that that's good work. There's more to do, but that's good work. Price is up 20 percent. Good work. Well, first of all, I just want to say one of my problems is when any politician talks about we created 800,000 jobs, the American people need to stop believing in this imperial understanding of economic activity. The politicians do not create the jobs. They shouldn't own every economic data point. And I believe that both ways. I don't think they should be blamed for everything, but Mm. they certainly shouldn't get to go take victory laps on other stats. But in in this particular case, she, first of all, sounded very tired and lacking energy in that explanation. And I believe the reason why is there's no conviction behind it. Uh, There is not a policy portfolio that she can allude to that is pro-growth, pro-middle class. Mm -hmm. And saying that we want to be less dependent on foreign uh, items, what are they doing to expand energy independence? Why are they cutting off our ability to export LNG? So the the proof is in the pudding. The policies do not match what she's saying rhetorically. And that's where she has to be challenged. But she's not being challenged by the dominant media. Let's stay on energy, David. Fracking. Listen to this. No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020 that I would not ban fracking. As vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. In 2020, I made very clear where I stand. We are in 2024, and I've not changed that position, nor will I going forward. I kept my word, and I will keep my word. Are you persuaded? Well, I just want to be clear. It was November of 2019 that she said, I'm going to ban fracking, Mm. and February of 2020 when she said, maybe not. So that's how clear she was, that it was two (laughs) months apart in that first flip-flop. And and the very obvious question that Dana didn't ask her last night is, why did you change? 
What was it about fracking you wanted to ban to begin with? What are you against uh, with horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing? What is wrong with these things to begin with? She can't give an answer to that. I don't believe she understands it. And then obviously it's a huge economic vulnerability because the robust job creation that growth industry represents Pennsylvania, Texas, Mm. Oklahoma, North Dakota, Ohio, et cetera. David, it really seemed to me that Harris was trying to make that make herself appealing to that moderate voter last night, that middle, the middle of the road person. Uh, And she said that she would put a Republican in her cabinet. Do you believe her? Well, of course not. And I don't understand this whole idea. If she's a principled progressive whose values haven't changed, why would she want a Republican in her cabinet? I thought Republicans were proto-fascist these days and so forth. So the whole thing is pandering politically, and it bothers me. There's no reason for a Democrat to put a Republican in her cabinet, and she shouldn't pretend she's going to do so. But look, if she's looking for some Republicans to go into the Treasury Department uh, to point to the Fed, I have a few suggestions for her. She's welcome to call me. (laughs) I hope that she would call you, David. I would tell her to listen to everything you've got to say. David Bonson, great to see you. Have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. Thank you.